Hello everyone, I'm Magali Clovy, the president of the Brussels French-speaking parliament. I would have loved to participate in this event and meet all of you, but unfortunately, it wasn't possible. So, before starting, thank you to the Council of Europe for inviting me to speak to all of you about the Belgian Deliberative Committees. Let's start together. The Deliberative Committees are parliamentary committees in the same way as all the other committees expect that these committees are mixed, composed both of citizens chosen by lot and MPs. I like to insist on the word deliberation. Why? It emphasizes the notion of community in considering an issue or making a decision. In two years, we have already organized five deliberative committees on very different topics 5G, crisis management, biodiversity in the city, homelessness, and the most recent work study training. As I have just told you, our committees are mixed. Three quarters of the participants are citizens and one quarter are the members of the ordinary parliamentary committee responsible for the subject of the deliberative committee. Let me introduce you the three phases of the process. I will try to be as clear, clear as possible. The first information phase consists in hearings of experts on the subject. The second one is the deliberation phase. In other terms, citizens and MPs gather in small groups to discuss with the help of facilitators. Last but not least, the recommendations phase which consists in drafting a series of recommendations based on the deliberation. This last phase obviously ends with a vote. According to the OECD, there are over 600 examples of citizens' deliberative assemblies. So why are we different? We have four specificities. The first one is the institutionalization, a complicated word to explain a very simple process. The second one is the drawing, the drawing a lot of citizens, which allows a better inclusion. The third one is the mix of the process, citizens and MPs. And finally, this is where the problem often lies in the other assemblies, the follow-up. Let me quickly explain some of the advantages of these specificities. The institutionalization makes the deliberative committees permanent, which allows us to constantly improve the process. Their mixed nature allows us to better take into account the experiences of citizens and thus to better adjust our decisions and enrich, enrich our legislation. The one duo allows us to delve deep into groups that are traditionally set aside, such as, for example, people who can't read or write. It's necessary to ensure that people are encouraged to come and join the process. Inclusion is, as you see, one of our major focuses. To make the meeting accessible and enable inclusion to as many people as possible, we have put in place several supports. We've ensured that the meetings happen outside the working hours. We also refund all the participants for their time and their work. Childcare is organized. We have professional facilitators present all the time to make sure that the process runs smoothly. And finally, we organize preparatory so session, uh, tailored information adapted to the needs of different groups. As you have now understood, deliberative committees force us as politicians and as an institution to work differently. The returns we get from participants is what keeps us going. Citizens and MPs are transformed by this experience and they are more hopeful and motivated. Citizens have a new understanding of what politics are and what they could look like. Indeed, citizens' participation gives citizens access to a political education that demystifies the institutional machinery. The process restores a sense of political identity to the citizens as a non-passive actor in society. Some skepticism 
uh, remains, however. On the citizen side, they always wonder if MPs will actually follow up on the recommendations and do something with them. And on MP side, some of them deplore the loss of power. The process is becoming more and more convincing. Indeed, as I told you, the process is constantly evolving and each change to the Vademecum gathers more and more members and convinces them. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that this could, uh, couldn't have worked if you hadn't worked with all political groups from the beginning, both the majority and the opposition. Finally, I would like to take a few more seconds to explain the major priority projects. We must ensure that administrations are aware of and trained internally to organize these processes and no longer rely on outsourcing with consultants. We are also working on citizenship leave to relieve citizens. Finally, inclusion is a real challenge. To further improve it, we are constantly pursuing our efforts with the concerned associations. My presentation in Nova I hope I've been uh, as clear as possible for your understanding. Thank you for your attention, and I hope to have the, the opportunity to meet you one day. I'm convinced that together we will build a world which is more horizontal and where being a citizen doesn't mean being powerless. Bye-bye.